Head of Mouse Hold is a very simple, pretty small card game that revolves around bluffing and deduction, and it has a very interesting theme to me. Uh, the players control clans of mice, and these mice are going around the house and they're trying to eat the cheese. And the illustrations are pretty, a little cartoonish, I like them. There is something, you know, almost childish, but in a positive sense, like the kind of thing that you see in games for children. But then I like the fact that under that cute video, near you have some dark elements the cheese is not there just for them to eat the cheese is bait on mouse traps and so you know that some of these mice will actually die a very painful and horrible death some actually will be making dying noises and as they do so they attract the cat of the house that will eat more mice. So it's a very interesting combination. Maybe I have a sick sense of humor but I like the fact that you had these cutesy images and then a pretty dark, pretty um, pretty grim uh, theme or, or some tones connected to the theme. Anyways, without further ado, let's see how the game works. The game is played in five rounds. You put out at the beginning of the game a number of mousetrap cards equal to the number of players and then you will draw cheese tokens blindly from the spile and you place one on each card. Then you flip them face up and you see the numerical value of those cards, or I should say of those tokens. So this round we are fighting for tokens that have 3, 4 and 2 victory point value respectively. At the beginning of each round you refresh the traps that had their cheese stolen in the previous in the previous round, could deal like this for five turns at the end of the game, or the fifth turn, the player with the highest total of victory points is the winner of the game. At the beginning of each round, you also shuffle these five cards, which are called speed cards, and they will identify the speed at which different types of mice will run this, this round. I know it's a little bit of a weird concept. Also, um, different types of mice are identified only by color, at least when it comes to these cards and to some wooden tokens, some meeples or mice balls. They're only uh, cod coded by color, so I think that will make it very hard for colorblind players to play. You shuffle these cards, again, all the same, but for the color, and you place them in a column next to the, the mice trap cards. They indicate the speed to which is goes from highest on top to lowest, or should I say slowest, at the bottom. So in this round, the, the orange mice are the slowest, then you had the blue, purple, white, and the green ones are the fastest. Each player also has a deck of cards such as this one. They represent different clans and you can see that from the symbol on the back of the cards and also here in the top right corner on the front. Different cards are identified again by different colors but at least here also by different illustrations. Still you need to be able to match them with the cards that are here to see the relative speed of each mice in the current turn. This turn, this mouse here is the fastest that there is. This one, sort of middle of the road, and this one just very, very slow. And also you have some cards that are only used in the two player games. So this is pretty much all that uh, the, the, the cards are, um, are good for. They're simply coded by color and placed, and the color indicates different amounts of speed or different types, quantities, strength or speed each turn. Each player also has a set of five mice, like you see here in this little conga line, and they simply, they simply have one of these tokens, one of these mice for each color in the game. Pretty cute, pretty cute, I have to say. Now, at the beginning of each round, each player secretly looks up their cards and you start the game with your entire deck. You may lose cards during the game later, so following rounds you may have fewer cards. But you look at all of your cards and you choose three of them. It's always three. And say I select these three ones and I place them here to indicate that these are the ones that I will use this round. Everybody selects at the same time, and once we have selected, you will put in front of you mice to indicate the colors of the mice that you 
are going to use this round. So this round I am announcing to my uh, fellow players that I'm going to use a blue, a green and a white mouse. In case I have multiple mice of the same type, I only have to put um, a mouse out per type. So if I have two white and a green, I only need to put out there uh, to announce a white and a green. So my opponents don't know if it's two white and a green or two green and a white. Actually, there's one more thing that um, that is coded on the cards, which is the symbol here, which is the squeaker. These are mice that when caught by the trap are particularly loud and that will attract the cat the cat of the household. So now we all have three cards in our hand, we all have announced what uh, what colors we have in our hand and then starting for the from the first player who is identified by this, this nice wooden token, we start playing cards. You will play cards under the, um, under the traps or if there already are card there's under the cards that have been placed before. So we're gonna form columns. And there may be only one column at the end of the round because everybody places under one single card or two columns or three columns. Three columns is the most common. The first card that is placed under a trap needs to go face down. So suppose this round I want to play this card here face down and this is my this is my move and then my opponent uh, is going to play this card and places it there. Then we have another player, the player with the shovel symbol and this player places a card here. So the first uh, card under a trap goes face down. The second goes face up. The one under that one goes face down and so on and so forth. You alternate down, uh, down, up, down, up. And so maybe at the end of the turn, at the end of the round when everybody has played their cards, they, the play area will look a little bit a little bit like that. I don't know if this makes any sense, uh, but just to give an example. And again, not all columns will necessarily have the same cards. Once we played all of our cards, so we flip them all face up and we adjust them based on speed. Uh, so for example, here we know that green is the fastest and blue is lower than green. So green will go before blue. We arrange them based, based on that order. Something important is that if there are multiple cards of the same type, they stay in the order in which they were. So this is why we retain the order that was played first, this one next, they're both green, this one goes first. And we do that for each, uh, for each column. Green up there, again, very fast. And then we have, uh, we have white, uh, purple and blue. And finally, ah, uh, come on, there you go. What do we have here? Blue, white and white. And then we retain the order of the two white cards and place the blue underneath. Now for each column, ah, uh, going first is tough here because you're gonna get caught by the trap. So the first mouse, uh, at this point the fastest mouse, the first mouse to go to the trap gets caught by it and is discarded and then the second mouse gets the cheese. So in this case the green player, I think you play the, the actually the the fork and spoon player that played the green card gets gets the cheese. Here, this mouse would be discarded, and this mouse here would get the cheese. Here, this one gets slaughtered, and this one here gets the cheese. Now, you remember I showed you that symbol that you saw earlier, which is the, um, the squeaker. If the first mouse in a row is the squeaker, then the, squeak the squeaker is killed as usual. Yes, the squeaker is. But also the one next to it is then, uh, right after it, is then killed. So for example, that suppose that this is the situation in this column here. The first is purple, because when then we have purple, blue, and orange, as you can see here. So the first is discarded as normal, but because it is a squealer, also the second one is discarded. And whatever is left there, and the next mouse that is in the line, if still there, 
uh, gets caught. So yes, if the squealer, if the squeaker gets caught in the trap, then makes a lot of noise and the household cat eats the second mouse in the row. There are a couple of other rules such as the slowest caller never gets caught by the trap, can still get eaten by the cat though, uh, but this is pretty much the general idea. The cat, the, the mice that have been removed, caught in the trap or eaten by the cat are out of the game. So this is pretty important because then your your deck of cards will become narrower and narrower, fewer options. The players will get, your, your opponents will get increasingly a better sense of what you have if they're paying attention. But this is the general idea. You select your mice secretly and then you you announce them, you know the colors, and then you play them. And based on what you see in front of the other players, uh, players play area and what they play, you use deduction or you just simply say elimination and you try to figure out what is still in their hand and what is placed there. And of course, that is something you want to take into account when you have to decide what uh, what you're going to play next and when you're going to play and where you're going to play your next card. At the end of the fifth round, the player with the most cheese points is the winner of the game. Now in this game I like the cute art, I really like the components, I like the mice, I have many, many meeples of different shapes, I don't think I had mouse meeples yet, so I'm, I'm happy to add them to my collection of unusual, bizarre, even game components. As for gameplay, I find it to be okay, but not particularly compelling. I was playing the game, I wasn't hating it, but I wasn't being drawn in. Not even, of course, taking into account the fact that it is a, a light game. I'm not comparing it to the biggest game, saying, well, it's not one of those. Within its category, it felt okay, not uh, super exciting. And I ask myself, why is that? Well, I think that one uh, one thing that um, that makes games really exciting is uh, is when gameplay is between is in that Goldilocks zone between total randomness, uh, therefore no control whatsoever, and complete knowledge and complete control. There are games that are fine when you have perfect knowledge and complete control, but those are the very high level of strategy. When you have a simple game, usually you like to have some randomness then, or some of the lack of control, and then also um, to have, uh, however, enough control that you uh, that you can create a strategy that creates that dilemma. You have several interesting options, and you're not sure which one is the good one. And that situation you cannot have when it's complete lack of control, total randomness, or or when you are complete control, then it's not that the dilemma. I guess that this theor theor theoretical intro is to explain why I found the game not all that interesting, because uh, the first part of the game, maybe the first round, or in any case when cards are selected, feels, um, feels completely random. There is just that random element. I'm selecting my mice. I know my friends, and I know probably they'll go with slow, with slow mice, and they'll probably do something similar, because you're hoping that somebody else gets killed and you go right behind them and get the cheese. I like that general idea that you're trying to get second. It's ideal to be second and sometimes it's good to be third if you get a sense that the mouse that will be killed is the squealer, um, the squeaker. But uh, the problem is that the first round uh, is pretty pretty random. And then uh, the randomness is increased by a game element that I didn't mention in my main segment. I forgot, that tells you how little, uh, how, how little I like it, which is event cards. There are event cards that, are, that you may include, you can choose also not to have them, I prefer the game without, uh, that will add random elements, uh, different things happen every turn, and they can have a huge, huge impact on the game. You may have, in the last round, all of a sudden now, a, a trap is worth so many points because of a random card that pretty much whoever gets the card wins the game. Very anticlimactic, very disappointing. You may have, again, may, these cards may swing gameplay vastly, so we decided, after we tried them, we didn't like them, we played the game without them. So, uh, even without those, I feel that the initial selection is pretty much, pretty much random. And that has a big impact because, of course, the mice that you use early on, you're not going to have them later. And you're going to have some players that maybe get a bad uh, first turn, first round, and they lose a lot of mice right there, and other people don't lose any. 
that's part of the game, of course. But if I cannot really strategize about and I feel that my chances of winning the game are severely reduced after turn one and there are still four turns to go, to me that is, that is a problem, makes the game a little less interesting. And basically, that is the point. You have some phases that feel entirely random and then also not just in the overall game, but within each turn, there is a point in which the game goes on autopilot. Again, it's fun to deduce what other players may have, but then after a while it's not that interesting of an intellectual exercise. I see out there you have a white, uh, a purple, and an, or and, um, and an orange mouse, and you play two of those cards already. Who knows which is the last one? So at that point, uh, it goes on autopilot. When it's clear, more or less, what everybody has, and sometimes it's clear early on, uh, again, you have two mice there, green and white, and then you play the two green. I wonder what you have left there. So, uh, when it's clear what players have, and sometimes there's there, there's still this, there's still steps to be taken, the game goes on autopilot. Pretty much there were many cases where we knew exactly how much everybody was going to score before everybody played the last card. Uh, sometimes even when we play, when I have played just one card, I knew, oh, this is exactly how it's gonna go. And maybe you are the player with the single, the, your, the only player with the fastest color, then you know that that mouse is doomed not very exciting so it's just weird to me and to me it's a, it's a problem something that prevented me from enjoying the game very much that the game goes from a phase in which it feels like you have no control whatsoever but then that doesn't turn into interesting dilemmas but into maybe one interesting decision that I make uh, during a round and and then because of the combination of cards, I'm stuck going on autopilot and knowing exactly how much I'm gonna score or not score. That zone of decision of interesting dilemmas or pushing your luck, etc., etc., um, it's just not there. It's a pity because there are other elements that I like, how you choose how much you want to risk, but again, very little control on the outcome at the end, uh, how the kind of mice that you want to, uh, to send out, but then again, the fact that the, the mice uh, that the mice change uh, change speed from round to round. This round, uh, you know, I lost some mice, and then I'm left only with mice that next round are going to be the fastest ones. Then I'm doomed. There's nothing I can do to prevent that. So just huge amounts of randomness uh, um, interspread by other moments in which the game feels completely mechanical. And that's, I guess, in a nutshell, that's why I went through the motions. I had maybe one relevant and interesting decision per round, and then I felt so that there wasn't anything else that I could do that mattered. Uh, maybe it's my friends, but there was a little bit of analysis paralysis precisely because you get a sense that indeed the situation is solvable. Uh, then players... Uh, took, in my opinion, much more time than a design of this type of this scope uh, should command. And so, well, I didn't enjoy it all that much. I found it lacked some of the reasons why um, I like to play games, and it required intellectual effort that seems to be disproportionate with what, with what the game has to offer. It is a game that either is solvable or feels solvable, which again, functionally still means you're gonna have to sit through turns in which the other players are taking a lot of time to try to solve a game. And for just a cute game where I'm sending out mice and I, I would just it to be simpler and uh, somehow I just send them out and see whether they die or not. I just wish the push or luck element felt more visceral, less cerebral, because I don't think that that element really works well. So, uh, head of household. I like the components, I don't like uh, gameplay very much and I guess that's that's pretty much my assessment, that's what I have to say about this game.